over a quarter of a million dollars of debt. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're finally going through my whole debt journey and how I got to where I am today with six figures of student loan debt and all the mistakes I made along the way. So let's get into it. So let's take it back to 2003, 18 years old, dropped off at college, no idea what I was doing, left to my own devices and personal finances were my own responsibility from that day forward. So what did I do? Stupid shit, naturally. I went and I opened my first generic credit card, you know, like a Visa, but I also thought it'd be fun to have store cards. I can remember off the top of my head, I had Gap, Old Navy, and American Eagle, probably more. <sighs> Not smart. So I spent my college years way overspending, having stupid credit cards. 2008, I finally graduated undergrad and I had $14,000 of credit card debt and about $25,000 of student loan debt. A few months later, I got my first job making about $60,000 a year, but I was still struggling to pay off that credit card debt and those student loans. So eventually I put myself on one of those debt relief programs where this debt consolidation company will come in and pay off all your credit cards, close them all out, and then you just make payments to the debt consolidation company. So you stop essentially bleeding all that interest money on those ridiculous store credit cards. So I did that. Eventually over the following years throughout 2009, 2010, I got all that paid off. I paid off my $25,000 of undergrad student debt. And just about that time in the fall of 2010, I decided I wanted to go back to grad school. In the fall of 2010, I moved down to South Florida and started grad school. The school I chose was a private, and that means expensive, grad school, and I went to a school that did not provide me uh, funding or a research project right at the start. In 2013, I was done with all of my classes and all of my research. I had collected all of my data, so now I was just at the point where I could start uh, editing and writing my thesis. So I moved back home to Maine and I took a full-time position with the state of Maine, thinking I would be working on my thesis um, during nights and weekends. And I think we all know how that tends to go. So throughout 2013 and 2014, while I was working and trying to write my thesis in my free time, I was still paying tuition because you can't just stop paying tuition. You have to keep paying until you're done. So in the spring, late spring, early summer of 2015, I finally finished and I finally graduated and defended my thesis. Woo! And at that point in time, I was wanting to move back to Florida. So in 2016, I accepted a position with the state of Florida and I moved down there in March and I started my new position at $32,000 a year. And now what we're not going to do here is we're not going to dwell on the fact that I was making $60,000 a year prior to going to grad school, quit that job to go to grad school, accumulate six figures of student loan debt just to come out the other end making about half the salary. We are not going to dwell on that. So 2016, started my job, state of Florida, $32,000 a year. I had purchased a used car and owed about $10,000 on that used car loan. I had about $2,500 in revolving credit card debt by the end of the year. And I had 211, $585,000 in student loan debt for a total of $225,000 $123.98 in debt. Over a quarter of a million dollars of debt. Whew. It's disgusting. Okay. 2017. My one year anniversary at my position in March, I got a $4,000 a year raise to a whopping $36,000 a year. Um, throughout that year, I managed to pay off my smallest credit card and my smallest student loan. 
I actually quit that job in August and moved back to Maine. I took a crappy $10 an hour call center job just to get by. I ended 2017 with $7,474.08 left on my used car loan, $2,889.10 in credit card debt, and $221,000, no, excuse me, $221,315.46 in student loan debt. At the very end of December, I received a job offer for the job that I currently have now. So 2018, in February, I started this job that I currently have now. So I moved to New Hampshire. At this new job, I started out making $85,000 a year. That brought me enough disposable income that I could start kind of doing a debt snowball towards my student loans. By the end of the year, I had no more credit card debt. I had paid off four student loans and I ended with $4,914.25 left on my used car loan and $211,966.84 left in student loan debt. All right, 2019, my lease was up in February at my first place, so I moved to a new, smaller, cheaper, and closer to work apartment. I also managed to eventually pay off that used car loan, which was good because in March, when I got it inspected, the mechanic told me they were kind of band-aiding it through 2019's inspection, and it was definitely not going to make it through inspection for 2020. The very last week of December, I went and bought a new car. And for 2019, I ended the year with, like I said, no more used car loan and no more revolving credit card debts. So I only had... only. I had $197,356.44 in student loan debt. 2020, everybody's favorite year, right? Okay, so January, I started paying for that new car. In April, I had paid off all of my private student loans. And as many of you may know, the federal student loans, uh, I think, mostly all student loans, but all I had left at this time was federal student loans, and those went into forbearance starting in April because of the pandemic. We all are aware of the pandemic. In May, I moved to this apartment that I currently live in now. It is much smaller, several hundred dollars a month cheaper, and I'm less than a mile away from work, so my commute and gas usage dropped dramatically. In July, I paid off my new car loan, so that was a $29,000 car loan I paid off in seven months. So I ended 2020 with $185,900.22 in student loan debt. And at that time, I had actually also saved up all of the interest or outstanding interest that was on all of my federal student loans, which of that 185,900, approximately $7,700 of that is just outstanding interest. So I do have that saved up. And as of today, March of 2021, student loan forbearance has been extended through the end of September of this year. So right before those payments come due, again, I will pay off that entire interest balance. Um, and hopefully going forward, any my monthly payments will actually start bringing the balance down instead of just keep throwing at an interest that keeps getting accrued again. Really shitty cycle to be in, so I wanna to try to eliminate that. I'm not gonna pay him off early just because we don't know what Biden's gonna do with the student loans. There's talk of for some forgiveness. Who knows if that's gonna come through. So I'm just gonna wait until September to see what actually happens with those. 2021. This year I decided to set up sinking funds so I could start really having, having targeted savings destinations for my extra money now that most of my monthly debt payments are gone. So if you've watched my monthly budget review videos, you've already seen me outline those sinking funds, but essentially they are things like an emergency fund, um, car and vehicle maintenance, vet and medical expense savings, and uh, I wanna con fully contribute to my Roth IRA this year. So that's what I'm doing going forward. And what I'm gonna do now is bring up the screen share of how I actually track my finances. And I've actually been using this method since 2016. And it's really simple. It's just a Google Docs spreadsheet. That's it. 
it works for me. I know it might not work for everybody, but it works great for me because I have access to it. Um, any computer I log onto or my phone, it's quick and easy to get to. And it just makes sense for me. I'm very much a spreadsheet person. So um, I just find it's, it's simple, it's free, and it works well for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up that screen recording now and show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so this is it. This is um, what my budget spreadsheet looks like. So down along the bottom, you, like I said, I've been doing this since 2016. So I just have a new sheet for every single year. Across the top, I just have income, day of the month and expenses due, source of income, amount of income, and then the months to follow. And right under the income is expenses the day they're due, the lender or whatever expense is owed, the amount, and then of course the months that follow. So under income right now I have my W-2 and I have rental property. I've been working on closing this particular rental property for a few months. Um, it's just taking a little while just because the real estate market is out of control right now. But um, So eventually that'll start bringing me in income as well. And then under the expense column, like I've said, the only revolving debt I have left is my federal student loans. So I've got rent, my federal loans, my gym membership since my work gym closed last year when the pandemic hit and they have not reopened. Um, they did reimburse the entire amount I paid for the year for 2020. I'm hoping they do that again, but either way, that's now a monthly payment that I have that is taken out on the 17th. I might get some flack for this, but I think 2020 taught everyone that self-love and self-care is extremely important and so I made the decision to sign up for a monthly massage membership. I don't care if you want to hate me for that, but it's something I'm willing to pay for. And then I just have Netflix and my cell phone bill. So in total, six monthly payments, not freaking bad at all. And I'm very fortunate here. My rent includes absolutely all utilities, including the Wi-Fi. I'm very lucky here. Um, so yeah, that's my monthly expenses. Here's the amount that I owe each month, the total down here. As something is paid off, I just mark it paid in this box. And as you can see, student loans are on forbearance till the end of September for now. We'll see if that changes going forward. Over here, I've got my sinking funds outlined um, and with the amount that I have left. And I cover those in more detail in my budget monthly budget review videos. So if you're curious about those, then stay tuned over there for that. So how I track my expenses is I get paid bi-weekly and every, for every pay period, I add right here the total amount that I should get paid. Um, so in, in these, let me start by saying I track roughly two months out. So this is the current pay period we are in now and these are the next three pay periods to follow just because I like to have kind of a look ahead with um, as far as my monthly spending is concerned. So. I, since we're in this current pay period, I knew exactly what my paycheck was going to be. In the subsequent pay periods, I always calculated it based on the absolute minimum amount that I will, that I could possibly take home per pay period. So that's just working 40 hours straight per week, no shift differential, no overtime. It's almost always more than this amount because I feel like I'm always on shift or working overtime, but I, I'm just leave it conservative and I calculate based on that absolute minimum amount. So like I said, current pay period, I got, this is exactly what my paycheck was. So every paycheck I save half the month's of rent. So that's $500. And then I calculate whatever monthly payments are gonna be due during that pay period. So from the 18th to the 31st, that covers these last three monthly payments, which are massage, Netflix, and Sprint. So down here we have massage, Netflix, and Sprint. And then any extra, that is, that is thrown towards savings or investing or one of my sinking funds. And those are the first things that I pay each pay period. As you can see, I already drew a line through them, which means they're already paid and already handled because anytime, the day I get paid, I always, always, always pay myself first. Normally that's to savings, like you can see going forward, but sometimes it's an investment account, like my Fundrise account. No matter what it is, I pay myself first every pay period. If I don't, it just leaves money open, sitting in my checking account and staring me in the face. So I get in, could potentially get in the mindset of, oh, I've got extra money, let's go shopping. And that's absolutely not what I wanna be doing. I wanna be 
working towards my goals as much as I can. So I pay myself first and then I worry about the monthly bills as they come out. So for this pay period, I invested $1,400 to my Fundrise account, which if you don't know what that is, it's, it's basically just a, um, an online real estate investing platform that lets you um, invest into a percentage of much larger real estate projects than typically a normal person would be able to invest in on their own. So I knew I wanted to contribute $1,400 to that. And then, yes, I did do a little shopping this pay period, but I wanted to upgrade my camera. So this camera that you guys have been watching me on today, I bought that as well. And then this $317 is the rest of what I have left over to live on for the rest of the pay period. So as you can see, next pay period is April 1st to the 14th. Well, the only payments I'll have coming out, that pay period is rent since my student loans are on forbearance. So all I have to worry about taking out is $500 for rent. And then I'm going to put the rest towards savings. So again, I know this paycheck will be higher because I'm actually on shift right now, getting shift differential and overtime. So anything extra, I'm just going to beef up the savings. I'm not going to beef up my spending allowance. I'm just going to, I'm going to beef up the savings because that's my priority and so on and so forth. As soon as we're out of this pay period, I'll delete this column, move everybody over and plan out the next pay period. So May 13th through whatever. And it's just that simple. And then down here, something I started doing this year was tracking my net worth. And then just to scroll back and show you guys, like this is where I started in 2016. Whew, that is a lot of monthly payments. That's friggin' 20 monthly payments. That's scary. That scares me to death. Like I had $646 extra to live on every month and, and up. That's gas, groceries, any other spending I needed and any extra to put towards debt to get myself ahead. Like that's, that's really scary to look back on now. But as you can see, it slowly, slowly improved over the years to where I am now. Whew, makes me panic a little bit looking back at that, but things are getting better. We do still have a long way to go. That's a lot of student loans, but we're gonna get there one day at a time. So that's how I track my expenses using Google Docs. So if this story made you cringe, if the amount of debt that I have makes you wanna throw up like it does for me, I just wanna say nobody's perfect. I don't think very many people at all grow up uh, understanding or learning about personal finance, how to handle money, how to handle debt, how to use credit cards properly. I just don't think that's taught to most people. So in some aspect, I think most, most of us need to kind of fall on our face, pick ourselves back up and figure it the hell out. So that's exactly what I did. Yes, I made a ton of mistakes along the way. I might be a little indecisive about where I wanna live. I move a lot. You know, I just, I made mistakes. Nobody's perfect. I'm trying to figure it out. Now that I'm in my mid thirties, I'm finally feeling like I'm getting somewhere and there's nothing wrong with that. Some people don't ever figure it out at all. And uh, who knows if I will, I don't know. I'm just trying to take it one day at a time and be better than I was yesterday. As long as we all learn from our mistakes and do better going forward, that's the best we can do. The whole point of me making this channel is to document my debt-free journey so that I can hopefully provide some motivation or helpful hints along the way for other people who might be on a similar journey. So I would love it if you wanted to subscribe and join me here on this channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.